In this video, we want to look at solving a uh, solving a problem based on the ideas we've introduced regarding functions and their use in MATLAB. Um, if we have a look here, we've prepared a small little problem. So we have an Excel spreadsheet, some r results for a subject. A lecturer wants to use MATLAB to process the data and we want to generate grades and feedback based on the grade. We have a spreadsheet and I've put the Excel file up on LearnJCU for you to try this yourself. So what we want to do is make a MATLAB function as opposed to a script which we've previously used. A function is um, a bit more advanced and allows for more flexible um, data manipulation, which is the idea behind this little example problem. And so we want to get the data from Excel, output a formatted list of student IDs followed by their grade and some feedback and we've put some ideas of what we might want to use that being cell arrays, um, strings and logical indexing so for starters strings are obviously going to come into play when we have things like feedback so that's going to be a sentence of um, some feedback based on a grade and that data is going to be stored in a string and since we're mixing data types since we're mixing strings with things like ID numbers which may be numbers and um, other sorts of numeric data it's a good idea to try and use cell arrays so we can have multiple types of data all stored together um, and we'll see how that pans out and here's some data here so let's just hop straight into MATLAB um, before I start writing before I start writing the script I mean the function we need to get the data so from the Excel file we can go file import data and make sure you're in the um, directory where your Excel file is and if you just click on the Excel file it should open up and we see MATLAB's import wizard has suggested um, based on the Excel sheets what sort of data we, we might have and each tab here each tab represents a variable that MATLAB wants to import from the Excel file. So we have data and you'll see this is just the raw um, assessment data. So I think, what did we say? Assignment, midterm, final. So we see that the first column is assignment, second is the midterm and the third column is the final. And there's a variable called text, text data which has things like the uh, column headings so you'll see there these are empty string arrays in text data this is where the numeric data comes in and the column headers have been extracted in the form of a string and notice here since um, in here I blurred out the actual student IDs just by placing the hash so it's imported a bunch of hashes as the student numbers. In reality, with this sort of problem, you probably would have um, an eight-digit number. And so again, these would be empty strings and there'd be another column of numeric data here. So let's just import that straight into MATLAB. Notice that there's a box here you can tick that generates MATLAB code. I won't do it today, but it's actually a useful idea that I've used in the past in that you can generate a function to import the same types of data from similar files. 
So if we had lots of Excel files for different uh, different subjects with results for assessment, we could generate a function and pass in the Excel file and each time the import function would pull out the bits of data we want. So let's just continue now and we see, as I said, these are the variables. Um, the numeric data is all in double, these double precision numbers. And the string data is in a cell array. So let's just import that now, click finish. And if we look in MATLAB, we see we have data and text data. So I just type data here, that's what we have. And text data likewise has the strings. So let's just clear that. So, so now we have the data we want, we can start to formulate a function. So first things first, if I'm writing a function, I need to declare it as such. So I'm going to write a function. It's going to have some sort of output. I'm going to call it grade, because that's, I guess, what we're doing. And the two inputs are going to be the numeric data and the text data. All right. So the function, I'm just going to put a bit of a help section here. Um, so this would be the H1 line, and then after that, I'm just going to discuss briefly each of the inputs and outputs. input and we have the output which is funnily enough also an output and this is a formatted let's make it a cell array because we're mixing strings and numeric data Let's say we want the student ID in the first column, the grade in the second column, and some feedback in the third column. And let's just save that now. We've called it, in the function definition, we've called it grade, and so MATLAB picks up on that and provides us with the file name grade. Note that, remember, you need whatever you've called your function up here in the definition is the exact same name that you must save it as, otherwise MATLAB won't associate your function with the actual code you've written. So now we know what we're trying to write, we might as well just dive in and have a go. So let's just write some comments first so we know what we want to write. Um, first things first, to find um, the grades, we have three different columns of different assessment, so we should find the total. And that's going to be something like total, and that can be equal to the sum of marks, and I'm going to do this across dimension two. Um, so using the function sum with the variable marks isn't something that should surprise you. We've hopefully you've come across this by now. But using the extra input to this function sum, if we just look here, we can provide a an extra input called dim, standing for the dimension. And because I've provided two as opposed to one, the function sum is going to sum across each row. So it's going to take the data from each column and add them together. And it's going to do this for each row. So it'll add 18, 15, 33 in the first row. And this will be the first student's total, total mark. Um, so now we have 
some sort of numeric total before here we should actually create the we should create the uh, arrays in which we're going to be saving um, data to so let's um, so now we know by based on total based on total we're going to know how many students we have and so we can actually use that information we can use this information to construct an empty cell array so this is going to produce an empty cell array with the dimensions of total as governed by this function. So hopefully total should um, have however many students in the class, that will be the number of rows and we just want one column. So likewise this is for each student there's going to be a graded result. Likewise for the feedback Since result is the empty cell array of dimensions we want, let's just make comment equal to that. And also, um, let's create the empty cell array for the uh, formatted output. So before we said we want the student ID in one column, we want the grade awarded in one column and some feedback in the other column. So three columns each of the same number of rows. So um, hopefully you can start to consider that we might just want to join a bunch of these empty arrays together. So this will produce one column here, one column here, and one column here. Each will be of each will have the number of rows according to the number of students and each will be an empty cell array. So we can go through once we do our data processing and save the needed strings into the necessary um, outputs. And also before we start processing the numerical data um, we should create a lookup uh, a lookup array for the written feedback and also extract the ID numbers from text so let's pick out ID numbers from the text file So I'm going to index into the variable into the variable text which has been passed as an input. I'm going to index into it from the second row down to the number of students plus one. I've started at the second row and gone down to the number of students plus one because you might recall that text data included the column headers. So we don't want this um into into our actual ID array. We we just want the student ID numbers given by these list of um, strings. So if we start at row number two and go down to row number n, where n is the number of students, and then we add one to it, we'll get to the last one. So that's what I've done here. And we want the first column. And we tell it the first column by this. So this is the number of rows we want. So row two all the way down to row length total plus one in the first column. And then let's create lookup array for lookup array for feedback. 
So I've called one array here, comment, I'm going to call these comments. And I'm just going to make this equal to um, a sequence of strings. based on the grades. So there's going to be a fail, which is the N grade, there'll be a P grade, there'll be a C grade, there'll be a distinction, and there'll be a high distinction. So now this is hopefully enough to provide us with um, the output we want. So let's put a breakpoint here and let's call the function to see so far if what we've done is going to is going to lead is going to yield the output we want. So we've come down here into the function, we've passed in the input text, and you'll see with functions, if you've called them and put a breakpoint inside of them to stop in debug mode, you might, depending on how new your version of MATLAB is, if you put the cursor over a variable it's going to show you the numeric value, or it's going to show you the, string con the c strings that are contained in it. So total has been worked out to be this. Result is empty. Output is as we wanted before, three empty columns. IDs is the list of ID numbers, and comments has yet to be computed. And if we do that now, comments has been made to be that, and at the moment we're at the end of the function. So everything seems to be producing the uh, producing the results we want. So if we exit debug mode, remove the breakpoint, we can start to yield some sort of output. So what we want to do for each student we want to loop over the array of totals. So for each student, we want to look at their total mark, the total numeric mark, assign a grade, and if we want to yeah, assign a grade and the written feedback. So as we said, a for loop. And I'm using the function length with the input of total to get the number of students. At, at the beginning, you might like to create a variable called capital N that is in fact length total and instead of using this all the time you could use just the variable N so that's not a bad idea to do things like that but for the moment um, I don't think I'll worry about it so if we we have, have if we have a for loop now and we're looping over each student we want to be able to decide based on the numeric value of their total grade what new what um, final grade is decided is is assigned I should say whether that's an N a P a C a D or a HD and with that there's some written feedback so to make a decision Usually we 
use an if statement. And so since n is our index variable or counter variable inside the for loop, I'm, go I'm going to use that to index into the array total. And I'm going to see if it's less than 50. That means this is a fail grade. And I'm going to let the string for their result be equal to n. And the comment for their grade to be comments, maybe yes. That's the first entry there. Notice how here when I've indexed into total, I've used regular curved brackets. This is because total is a, um, if you want to call it a regular array that we've thus far dealt with. It is um, a vector and even if it was a matrix, we would still be using the curved bracket with some sort of indexing here. But notice here with result and comment, where here we've created them as cell arrays. With cell arrays, we've, we need to index into them using the curly braces here. So you can't use the curved bracket to assign um, data to a location in a cell array or to pull out the actual contents of a cell array. If instead you used curved brackets, um, MATLAB will interpret what you're, what you're asking for as something completely different. And once we've get, got this function going, we'll just quickly check that to confirm. Um, so now this is the grade for a file and likewise I'm just going to copy over this for each um, so now we've done a file we want to look for a pass, but less than a credit. So I'm going to say if it's less than 65, and I'm going to say comments is equal to two. So now I can copy this down. So we can have now a grade for a credit. So it's greater than a pass, and we know it's greater than a pass, because it's got through the fail section, it's got through the pass section, but it will be less than 75. So we can call it a credit and assign that. Likewise, we can see if a grade is less than 85%, but greater than 75, that means we can assign, assign it a distinction. And otherwise, if it's greater than all the others together, it must be a HD. So let's put that there and let's make that. Okay. And we now we have we ha now we have the if statement inside the for loop making decisions for each student. And we're going to look at if their grade, if their numeric mark is less than 50 it's a fail if it's less than 65 but greater than 50 it's a p and so on so we can end the if statement and now let's put all the data we've computed together into the cell array for the output So as we had before, we created the empty array. So we have something there at the start, and it's empty with three columns, all of the um, same number of rows, that being the number of students. And now we say the first column is the ID numbers, the second is the result, 
N, P, C, D, H, D, and so on. And the final column is the written feedback. So let's just clear that now. Let's try running that again. So we've got an error. So we can see there's um, the location where the error is at. And if we click it here, it tells us where we've gone wrong. And if we see there's a squiggly red line, if we put the mouse over it, there's something wrong with the brackets. And what I should have done is because we're using cell arrays, I instead accidentally used a square bracket and it didn't like that. Um, so let's try again. And now we have the output being a cell array with um, three smaller cell arrays inside of it. Okay. So now, so now we can um, have a look at the output. I've made a small change. Um, before I used a square bracket and accidentally used a curly bracket. Um, I've changed back to just square brackets because I've um, realized what I want to do now is instead join the cell arrays um, given by those three variables. I want to join them together into a final cell array of three columns. So now if we so now if we run our um, function okay now we have O let's see what O is and so we can see it's the student numbers in the first column the actual grade and some written feedback the shorter strings are only displaying because of the size of the window. Um, and uh, because these are too long to fit on this window, it's just abbreviated to what is actually inside the um, element inside the cell array. So if instead we look at, if we double click in the workspace, if we look at O, we see the IDs, the grade, and the uh, string for the feedback. So the so the longer um, the longer t strings are still there, but just when we went to print them before, they were too long to fit on this window. So if you have a, um, I've shrunken this MATLAB window to fit on my screen to um, record the screencast. But if you were doing this on a normal computer with um, a full-size MATLAB window, it should print fine. Uh, just to mention the point I made before about curly braces and curved brackets with MATLAB and cell arrays. If we use curly braces and we look at, um, let's see, let's go for the fourth row in the third column and see it's going to print one, two, three, four. It's going to print this. But if instead we used, and so it prints the actual, it prints the actual contents of the cell array. Um, but if we use curly, if we use curved brackets instead, see how it um, provides the string instead. And if we look in the workspace, it's actually a one by one cell array. So it extracts a cell array from the cell array. Okay, now this is as opposed to using the curly braces, um, where the curly braces are used to index straight into the cell array and it pulls out the exact contents, whether it be a string or a number or a logical value it pulls out the exact contents and that's what it returns 
And we can see that up here in the workspace. We have ANS is actually equal to, um, given by AB, it's equal to a character. And the value is this string. Um, so keep that in mind when you're using cell arrays. So in summary, cell arrays are a useful little um, tool in order to help mix strings. And that's with strings of different lengths. So even though in, in the same column we have all of these, um, all of these are the same length except for this one, it doesn't matter. Likewise, all of these are different lengths, but they still fit in the same column just fine. So this is what we can do with cell arrays. We can mix numeric data with the string. Um, and yeah, that's a handy thing that we can't do with regular, uh, just regular arrays. And so this is um, a function that we've produced in order to solve a problem. Um, hopefully this helps in understanding this week's lab. Um, and so just remember with functions, there's the definition, we have some comments and as always, when we write our programs, try and write comments before you write your actual MATLAB code. That way you know what you're writing, you know what you want to achieve, and that helps in uh, constructing um, a bare bones solution to a problem. Okay, thanks.